Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, and I am so excited today. First of all, we're going to be doing the second part of bounce back players from every team. That's enough to get excited about right there, but check this out. My Marvin the Martian shirt came in. Woo! Look at that. Marvin the Martian, man. You guys remember that? If you're old enough to remember that. Otherwise, did you know about it? You should go check it out. Bugs Bunny in the gang, my friends. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Steel Flyers, it's the best there, I said it. Do you like all four major sports and the uh, and teams within those four major sports? You will much enjoy www.steelflyers.com. Come. Okay, we're going to be looking at the bounce back players from every team. Now, I guess I have to tell you this. Bounce back players means players that have either had a couple poor seasons and now they're going to crush it or had a bad year last year and now they're going to crush it. So it's not breakout players, which we did. We did the breakout players. You might want to take a look at that. You can check it out by subbing. Now, how did we get this information? On my live show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, we have interactive events every day from 3 to 5 Eastern, weekdays, not every day, every day that's a weekday, and uh, people come on and we discuss and we make a video out of our discussion, so you might want to be part of that, I would if I were you, that's why I do it every day, because I don't like it, it's fun. Okay, let's go to, uh, it's much frolic, the frolic, oh, the frolic. Let's go to our first one, Nashville Predators, and uh, bounce back players, there was a lot of people, teams, there were a lot of bad players on Nashville last year. Um, we had, we had Josie. Uh, didn't have a stellar year last year, but nobody really did. We just think he's going to get back to possibly Norris caliber again. Uh, Philip Myers, after having really a difficult season in Philadelphia, should come with a new environment and crush it. Not to mention that Nashville has been well known to to uh, develop defensemen very well. Obviously, look at at home, they just traded Ellis, who they developed. Josie, who they developed. Fabro's coming along just fine. They crush it when, when it comes to developing defensemen, which bodes well for, for Myers. And probably Myers having a really good year. The other ones would be Matt Duchesne and uh, Johansson. That would be one heck of a bounce back like for Duchesne, I just think it's so unlikely that he's actually going to come back and have a good year after having, since 2018-19, when he had a point a game for the Ottawa Senators. Ever since he got to Nashville, it's just been poopy. So he's a bounce-back candidate, but I don't necessarily think that he it will bounce back. Ryan Johansson is the other one that came up in the stream. And... Um, uh, I, is it a bounce back or is this just what he is now? Let's face it. He, he He's a 50 to – he did have 22 points, 36 points the year before. Bounce back to 64 points again, maybe. But let's just face it. He's not a number one center. So he's not bouncing back into being a number one center. He is bouncing back to being what he is, like a second, maybe a third line center. So I, I, I kind of struggled with that actually being a bounce back, but we set it on the stream, so I decided to do it anyways. Next, the New Jersey Devils. And uh, the first one that came to mind to everybody, including myself, was Tatar, who didn't really have a stellar season last year in Montreal. Um, he's kind of inconsistent anyways, like, he always Tatar has always kind of left you wanting more, like there was more there, but he's pretty much 
now a 50 to 60 point winger. Last year on a full season, he probably would have had about maybe just under 50 points, but probably wouldn't have had 10 goals, which would have been the first time in two years that he didn't get at least 20 goals. So we figure that going to New Jersey, he'll have more of an opportunity and be able to crush it a little more and have sort of a bounce back season. Um, uh, Janssen was another one that came up who just ba- who had a bad season. I don't think Janssen is any more than what he is here. I don't. I just think that's what he is. But that being said, he has had some pretty decent offensive years. 2018-19, but 11 points in 50 games, Mr. Janssen. Did you go to the house of spanking that I informed you to go to? I, I'm not sure, but you should. Perlo's house of spanking. It's the best there. I said it. Sometimes you just need a good spanking. Um, so 11 points. Can we bounce back to at least a 40-point player? I think we all thought he could, so we're going to give it a shot. Subban. Now, before you get all uppity, before you get all crazy, going all willy-nilly and throwing things around the room, Subban is not an opportunity to be with a much better defense this year and play with a much better defensive defenseman in Ryan Graves, who has been doing very, who is doing very well in Colorado, which should give him more of a chance to play on the offensive side of the puck, which is his forte. So we thought that maybe Subban has a bounce back year. Also, it's a contract year. People tend to like the monies. Gives them a little motivation to get her going. You know what I'm saying? Okay, uh, what else? What do we have? Do we have one more? He had lots here. Oh, Blackwood. Blackwood, after his injuries last year, will have a crushing year as he has Jonathan Bernier breathing down his neck. And I believe, I'm very positive that Bernier will be breathing down Blackwood's neck. Uh, I don't know how much you guys, I know you guys are, maybe some people might look at Bernier's numbers and go, oh, well, they weren't that great. In Detroit, he was fantastic the last two years. And I think that's not going to change in New Jersey with a better defense in front of them. So McKenzie better have a bounce back is what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Next. New York Rangers, um, the only one we could come up with a bounce back year because everybody had great years, uh, pretty much. Or were just rookies, you know, working their way up, which doesn't really give them the opportunity to have a bounce back year because you got to have really good years before you can bounce back from, before you can have a bad year that you need to bounce back from. You know what I'm saying? So... The only one we could come up with is Truba. Truba now gets to go in his fourth, in the, you know, sort of cemented in the number four spot uh, for for defensemen, and uh, maybe it takes a little bit of pressure off of off of him, and he just has more of a crushing year. It's not like he's been terrible. I think it's more to do with the fact that his cap hit at $8 million is pretty rich for a good top four defenseman. He's a good top four defenseman, but $8 million, you're kind of supposed to be a two defenseman. But uh, we think that the expectations will be off this year, and maybe he has one of his better years than he's had in a while. I'm not sure he's ever going to put up the offense that he did in Winnipeg uh, with Fox and um, the he, not getting really the power play time that he might get on other teams. Um, you've got Fox is going to take up a lot of that power play time, and he's a right defenseman. So he might get second power play unit time. But I could see him putting up a little more offense in 12 points in 38 games. Could see it. That's our bounce back for the New York Rangers. New York Islanders. Uh, question marks here. 
Palmieri, who did have a pretty good, um, who did have a pretty good playoffs, but he had a terrible regular season. Twenty-one points in fifty-one games. He just couldn't get it going. And that was with the Islanders too. He only had four points in seventeen games when he came over from the Islanders. Seventeen points in thirty-four games for the New Jersey Devils. That there's going to be more than that expected of Palmieri. And I think he's going to get every opportunity to do it. The question is, do I think he's going to have a bounce back season? I personally don't. I think he's going to be a forty to forty five point guy now for the rest of, for the rest of his career. Um, how old is he now? It's thirty years old. Wow. You know what? I thought he was older than that. He should. He's got to have a bounce back here. He's got to be in the 50 to 60 point range. I don't know why. It just doesn't feel to me like he's going to. Um, this is his hometown. You know, you know, he's from, this is New York. He should crush it, but I don't know why. It feels like, tell me why Islanders fans, I think that. And uh, Parise. Now, I for some reason, I think it's just there's more of a fire under Parise this year to really have a great year at 37 years old. Um, I think he could bounce back from what was kind of a stagnant time for him in Minnesota. Things got a little stale. This is going to be all fresh and new, and Barry Trotz is going to be there egging him on. And I, I don't know. I just think I could see him having a much better year than he's had in, I think, a couple of years with Minnesota, right? Uh 18 points, 46 points. That wasn't bad. Something like that. I could see that happening again. 40 in 70 games, like 40 to 45 points to 50 points. Nothing wrong with that for a 37-year-old, especially for what they got him for contract-wise. So, yeah, those are our guys from the Islanders. Ottawa Senators, there was only one. And it's got to be for them, seriously. Like, it has to happen. Matt Murray. Matt Murray has got to bounce back from what has been a long time coming for a bounce back. Um, ever since 2018, he just hasn't been the same. Although, 2018-19, he did have a .919. But that was a, after Flurry left... Things just went downhill, and then he had a terrible time in Pittsburgh in 1920. And then last year in Ottawa was pretty much a write-off. Injuries, terrible numbers. This is the bounce back year for for uh, Murray. Do I think it's going to happen? I I wouldn't. I I give it like maybe 30. percent I I just don't. His attitude, man. Blaming other players, he's got that. He's got an attitude like nothing's wrong, and that's the last thing you want to see from a goaltender is that's struggling is acting like that. So I don't know. Maybe there's an attitude change, some maturity, or what have you. Could happen. Uh, Flyers. Well, just how they're like when I put this out on the live stream uh, that you can be part of. By the way, if you just hit the subscribe button. Uh, five days a week, three to five Eastern. Uh, when I put this out on the live stream, basically everybody said, and especially the Philadelphia Flyers fan said, pretty much the whole team. Uh, <clears throat> we have connect me, heart, especially heart. Oh my gosh, they need heart to bounce back. And I believe he will. Connect me needs to have a better season. He had a season last year where he's kind of, Butt heads with uh, the coach and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Hayes, but Hayes apparently was injured. He's injured again. He's got to come back healthy and have a better year this year. Uh, Proberoff, Sanheim, Atkinson, and Ristolainen. Ristolainen was up there, but I wouldn't even really call it a bounce back. This is a year where he, it's got to all come together for him in Philadelphia. No more excuses. Yes, okay, you didn't get developed well in Buffalo, but here's your opportunity to be able to take hold to a uh, much more successful organization and find your spot in the top four. Big, huge year for him. Atkinson, 
things got stagnant in Columbus. Uh, hearing him talk about, uh, you know, he, he's a loyal guy, basically, and his loyalty just wore out. Uh, too many players leaving and too many difficulties. A lot of drama going around in Columbus. And the good thing about Risto, uh, uh, Atkinson, and Ellis, who doesn't need a bounce back year, he had a great year last year, is that these guys are wanting to come to an organization that wants to win and this team wants to win. It's going to change the energy of this team, I think. But those were our bounce backs, lots of them in Philadelphia, for sure. Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, Malkin, who apparently is going to be out till Christmas. So injuries, injuries, injuries with Evgeny Malkin. And you hear a lot of people saying, well, his heart's not in it. Well, it sounds like he's in pain, man. He's in pain. And it's hard to have that heart moving when you're in pain like that. So I hope you get better, buddy. I know you're watching, Mr. Malkin. Of course you are. Who, who's not? Everybody's watching, right? Right. What's not to watch? Of course you're watching. Uh, Zucker, I think this is unlikely. Uh, I really think Zucker is going to keep on going backwards. I don't know. I watch his game. It just gets more perimeter every year. More perimeter, more perimeter. And Jason Zucker, I mean, in the NHL, you just can't play like that and be successful. Um but there was guys in the stream that thought, you know, he's a candidate. In other words, he needs to bounce back. But the question is, can he bounce back anymore? It's been since, what, 2018 he had a 64-point season. And the thing with Zucker is if he's not putting the puck in the net, he's not doing too much else. And he hasn't been putting the puck in the net for three years. So do I think it's going to be a bounce back? I think it's unlikely myself, but... We put him in there. And Marino. Now, Marino, had, his numbers were not as good as previously as far as offense is concerned. He was working more on the defensive side of the game, and it looks like he's going to be more of a shutdown guy as it all pans out. So I don't really think he had a horrible year last year, actually. But... His offense did dip, and there are people that believe his offense will come back. We'll see. I think they're leaning more to making him more of a shotgun down guy, so we'll see. Next, the San Jose Sharks. And oddly enough, I thought there would be a whole bunch of bounce back guys here. But really, this team has been poor for such a long time that... We got Hurdle. Actually, did we have Hurdle? No, Meyer. Meyer had a really bad year. Actually, Hurdle wasn't that bad. It was about his average. Timu Meyer really had a bad year last year. He looked like he just didn't have it in him. And uh, we think that that could be some energy problems with the Kane situation. And that that'll change now whether if Kane comes back, they will also do things to make sure Kane is not doing whatever he was doing that ticked everybody off there in San Jose. And I don't think that I don't think anybody thought that he was gambling on his own team. So I think it had more to do with that. I think it's deeper than that. Something that followed him everywhere he went. Uh, but whatever it is, he better he's got to stop it. And guys like Timu Meyer might have better years. Uh, and Carlson. I think Carlson still, I still am a Carlson believer. Um, I know we got had the foot problem and all that kind of stuff like that, but I still believe he's only 31 years old, man. I still think there is an offensive season to come out of Carlson yet more than one. I think he can get more offense still. Um, and I know he's not the greatest defensively. He never really was. And he has lost a step a little bit, but 22 points in 52 games, I can see him back to the 40 to 45 point range at least. And that would be a bounce back season for him if he does that. Seattle! The Seattle Kraken. Eberle, 
did have a rough season last year, uh, a little bit for him. And uh, a lot of people are thinking he's going to be a number one winger and uh, he's going to be relied on a lot. And that means Jordan Everlay is going to get a lot of points. Uh, that was in my stream. They said Everlay right away. I disagree. I think Everlay needs a center and they don't have much of a center. He's not a guy to run a line. So I actually think you're going to see a regression rather than a bounce back. But they were heavy on it in the stream. So I put it here. You guys can be part of the stream too. Subscribe and you can tell me what you think. And guess what? On my stream, you don't have to be all polite about it. We're hockey guys here. You can tell me I'm an idiot or whatever. Tell me in the comment section if you want. I don't care. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Uh, Schwartz. Got to. This is dicey. He is having injury problems. And I want him to have a bounce back season. 21 points in 40 games in an injury riddled season is not great. Uh, at least get back to this 57 point range. The guy plays his bag off if he's not injured, and that's probably why he's injured. He, he's fearless. And uh, I'm afraid that the injuries might be starting to pile up on here, and he doesn't, but I'm hoping he has a bounce back. Done. Vince Done. Terrible year last year. I don't know what he did to. to uh, Barube there in St. Louis, but Barube was not happy. Anyways, he had 20 points in 43 games. Apparently, it was just playing defense. He just decided, I'm going to play my way, and I don't care what you say, Barube. I think that's what it was. The year before, he had 23 points, and Barube didn't say much of anything. So it sounds like he's like, I want to get my offense back, and I'm going to play offensive, and if you don't like it, too bad. And Seattle has him now, so we'll see how they play him. But uh, he's got to get more than 20 points in 43 games to justify that poor defense that he played last year. And it was poor. It was not good. So we're banking that with new coach, new ears, new voice, new everything, that Dunn's going to get his uh, uh, come back and have, have a great year. So I'm, I'm a little suspicious if that's going to happen, but we picked him. Uh, and Larson, Larson had a bad year for the Oilers. Um, I, it seems that he just didn't want to be in Edmonton for whatever reason anymore, because apparently the Edmonton Oilers offered him more term and more money. And he still went to Seattle. Each. That's not very good, is it? There's lots of reasons for that. And I live in Edmonton. Could be just the freaking cold. But Seattle's got the rain. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know the answer to it. But obviously, he didn't want to be in Edmonton anymore. He didn't have a great year last year. Something might have affected him there. And he decided he wanted a change. So I imagine he'll have a better year with all that being said. this To, to me, this is a pretty good bounce back candidate. And Giordano is going to have every opportunity to do everything. Unless... He possibly gets traded at the deadline, depending if he wants to stay there or not. They haven't made a captain from what I understand. I think you'll be able to figure out if he's going to stay there or not by whether he takes the captaincy, which I'm pretty sure is on the table for him. I'm guessing if he doesn't get a captaincy or they say we're not going to put a cap, give anybody a captaincy, then, you know, if they don't put it, give make anybody a captain, it may not be Giordano. Giordano may just want to stick around. It's hard to say. But he could have a big year. He's only 37 years old. He, he, there was a lot of drama in Calgary, and he handled it very well. He was a captain there uh, with the change of the coach and just the team not gelling and all that kind of stuff like that. Now, that being said, you could say, well, if you're such a great captain, why what, should that be happening? Not always the captain's fault. Sometimes it's personnel. Sometimes they just... The personnel is never going to gel no matter how much you try. But I think he can do better than 26 points in 56 games. He had 74 points. The bounce back would be anywhere in the 50-point range if he could get back to that again. And I think he can. I think it's possible, very possible that he could. Next, St. Louis Blues. 
Uh, Bennington had a meh year last year. 0.910 is not enough. Now, that being said, I'm not a fan of St. Louis's defense, so you got to give it that. But watching Jordan Bennington last year, he got affected by way too many things outside of his freaking net. Like, get your head in the game, dude. I know you're an emotional guy and all that stuff like that, but maturity has been an issue with Jordan Bennington since he was in the AHL. It's why, I, I think it's why, I shouldn't say why, I think it's why it took him a while to get into the NHL. And it's still lingering today. And inconsistency has a tendency to be a problem. Maybe, 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 maybe this is a year that he puts that behind him. Because if he does, the guys, he's got Vesna caliber skills, man. Like, really hope he does for Blues fans, that's for sure. Because I think you're really going to need him this year. Pareko. Just injuries, coming back from those injuries. I'm rooting for freaking Pareko, man. When he was healthy and everything was going, he was beastly. I want to see for a guys like that in the league. I love watching Parecos when they're at their best. So I'm freaking, I know you're watching, Mr. Pareko. I know you are. I'm going to make you feel good on your insides right now. All right. I'm rooting for you, my friend. I'm rooting for you. Okay. And. What else we have for St. Louis? Thomas just got a contract, two point something million dollar contract. Uh, I just did a video on it, actually. Uh, you might want to check it out. Uh, if there was a time where you didn't want to give somebody a large, you, a small contract, it was here. I think everybody wanted Jordan Cairo to, or not Cairo, uh, Roberts, Robert Thomas. To pull in a two more than two point eight at this stage of his career for two years, but this last year was terrible. I think he had like twenty six shots in thirty three games. I don't know if there was some lingering injury issues or whatever it was, but big year for Robert Thomas. There, the expectations for the Blues are the uh, was more than twelve points in thirty three games. That's for sure. Um, more than at least back to this 42 and 66 bounce back year for Tom, Robert Thomas. Is he going to have a bounce back year? I'm that was really a bad year. Uh, I don't know what it was. I can't, I'm going to say it's like a 50 50. I'm not really, really sure. Next, Bolts, Tampa Bay, uh, Hedman, Hedman into his own himself said it was not a good year for him. And that's 45 points in 54 games played, not a good year. He he just wasn't on his game last year, and apparently it was because of injury. He's getting it taken care of this year, and I'm sure he'll just crush it. For Hedman, if he's not winning a Vesna, he didn't have a good year because he'll be head above everybody in the league for Vesna. You know, the Vesna? Did I say Vesna? Yes, Hedman's going to win the Vesna. Mm -hmm. Best goaltender in the year. Norris! Jeez. Anyways, I think he's going to come back and crush it because why would you even try to think otherwise from a guy like Victor Hedman? Elliot. Also, Elliot. Elliot had a just awful... I'm... A, Philadelphia Flyers fan, and it's been brutal. It was brutal, brutal, brutal last year. Actually, even two years. 0.899s are not enough. Uh, I think he'll be an improvement over McElhaney. I'm sure he'll love playing in behind that defense compared to what Philadelphia offered up the last two years. So I really do think Elliott will have a bounce back, even though he is on the older side. Uh, I think this will be, he's got all the pressure off of him now. Vasilevsky's there. He just comes in every once in a while and, uh, it will be in the perfect situation for him. I think he's going to have a great year. Toronto Maple Leafs and, uh, Ilya Mikhaev had a bad year last year and apparently he wants out of Toronto. He asked for a trade. They didn't supply it to him. I need an itchy ear. Uh, they didn't supply him the trade. They didn't give it to him. And he's coming back and trying to have a bounce back here. Now, do I think he's going to have a bounce back here? No. Not, I mean, if you're not happy, 
not likely they're going to bounce back. Maybe he can get his head in the game and realize that if I put up points, I'll get traded. I don't know why he wants to get traded. Maybe the media is, you know, that can be difficult for players or whatever. I have no idea. But maybe he can find the motivation in doing so by the fact that he wants to get traded. And I don't think Toronto is just going to trade off Mikhaev for nothing. So if he puts up numbers, there's more chance that he'll get uh, he'll get traded. Matthews and Marner, and that's just the playoffs. The regular season, they're fine. Actually, everybody knows that about the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's the case anyways, right? And do I think that they will have a bounce back year? If they make the playoffs, I don't think it's their fault that they won't. I, I just think this team is not deep enough um, all the way through. Forwards, defense, and goaltending. I think they could have much better playoffs than they had before. Those two guys in particular. But I don't think that they're going to do well in the playoffs. Sorry, Toronto fans. Uh, I got to see it. This team needs, and they need some big, I've talked about it in previous videos. You can go watch them. Vancouver Canucks. Bounce back years for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, Pedersen, almost for sure. Peterson, Pedersen, almost for sure he's going to have a bounce back here. Uh, he was just, he was injured last year. Oh, what am I doing? He was injured last year with COVID. He's young, all of that kind of stuff like that. I know you don't like to make excuses, but these are reasons. And he still had 21 points in 26 games. It's not terrible, but I think you're going to see a huge year from Elias Pettersson this year. You heard it here, probably not first. Ekman Larson, out of Arizona, out of jail, and onto an offensive team, a very offensive-minded team. I think he is going to have a great year in Vancouver. I, I'm positive of it. I don't know if he's going to be all that great defensively. Um, but offensively, I think he's going to crush it. And I think he'll be better defensively too. Rick Tockett's system was not good for Ekman Larson. It was way too one-way defensive shot blocking and all that kind of stuff like that. Ekman Larson's a flow player. He needs to flow, go with some offense and a uh, skating team and stuff like that. I think Vancouver could be perfect for him. So that's our two from Vancouver. Uh, Golden Knights, Dodonoff. Now, the question, is he going to be a bounce-back guy? He needs to be a bounce-back guy because last year was pathetic, to say the least. I watched a lot of Ottawa last year. And most of the time, I was like, "What's the don't? Where, where are you? What are you doing, dude? Like, where? His head just wasn't there at all. As something, it just didn't work for him in Ottawa. Could he be a bounce back guy? Yeah, it seems like Vegas is able to bring in guys like Chandler Stevenson and William Carlson and make career years out of them. So, yeah, he could definitely." be a bounce back just because he went to Vegas. And talking about William Carlson, William Carlson, the bounce back there is he's back to almost being a point of game guy. I don't think so, but it was on my stream. People thought there's a lot of people think he can get back to that, but I don't think so. I think this is what he is. I think he's about a 50, 55 point second line sentiment. That's what he is. Nothing wrong with that. But a lot of people think he can get back to the, Year he had, what was that? First year, wasn't it? Yeah, 78 points. He was on a 50 point. I think that's what he is. 40, 50, 46, 56, 50, 50 point guy. I think that's what he was. He just had a one of those years where everything went right. And uh, I don't think that's his average. But there are people, obviously, because there's a lot of people in the stream that thought that he could be that. Um, if you want to be part of that, just sub yourself up and you can be part of the stream and do these videos with us too. Uh, Washington Capitals bounce back. Uh, Ovechkin was said, I, he had a pretty good year. He almost scored 
The guy's 36 and he got almost 48 points and people are wanting to call 42 points and almost 48 goals and people think that he's going to have a bounce back year. Bounce back to what? 50 goal score? I guess. Anything. It's Alex, Alex Ovechkin. Anything can happen. I just, I, I don't think it's very likely, but they had him in there. Kuznetsov. Well, I don't know. I guess there was partying going on or... You know, there's talk of cocaine usage, and he hasn't looked good. Didn't look good on the ice last year. Really ticked off the team brass or whatever. Uh, if there was a way to get in trouble, Kuznetsov was in it. Do I think he's going to have a bounce back? Could. I'm not. That's one of those ones where you got to be kind of in the mind and see if he's putting his focus back onto strictly hockey and being the best athlete he can be. If so, yeah, I think he can be. If not, no, I think it's actually way worse. Could get way worse. Um, and Sam Sonoff was another one. Um, tough to call it a bounce back. It was a tough year. But I think he'll get better. I've never been a huge Sam Sonoff guy. I, I never really thought of him as a number one goaltender. Like, you know, top notch number one goaltender. Uh, how old is he? He's only 24. He's still got room to move. I think he's going to be a good 1B. But I'm not sure. He, or 1A, I should say. Like, you know, not like a... I don't think he's going to be like a top 8 goaltender in the league. Like a lot of people do. We'll see if I'm right or not. I, I don't know. But uh, bounce back? He just had a bad year as a young goaltender. Sure, he can bounce back it was a tough year for everybody last year. So, uh, Winnipeg Jets, Hullabuck did not have a great year last year, I have to say. And uh, do I think he can bounce back? Of course. Big guy with his talent, his size, uh, athleticism. Of course he can come back. 0.916. Not a bad thing when you get a 0.916 save percentage with a bad defense and you're looking for a bounce back year. Guy just didn't crush it as much as usual. I imagine he will crush it, like usual, next year. So I could definitely see a bounce back here. Uh, Dubois would have to be a bounce back year. Terrible time in Columbus. Asked to get traded. Didn't want to be there anymore. Hart wasn't in it. Goes to Winnipeg. Goes through COVID protocol. Comes out and looks like crap. Can he bounce back? When you look at what he was like in the playoffs when they got to Shane and they still had Panarin, you think, yeah, yeah, I can. But I'm very skeptical of players that give up on Tortorella. I don't know if it was Tortorella specifically. He never came out and said it. But Johansson, Duchesne, Johansson gave up on Tortorella. Uh, Le Cavalier, when he was in Tampa Bay, uh, when Tortorella was in Tampa Bay, they battled with each other. And as soon as Tortorella left, Le Cavalier went to dirt. He pushes you to the limit and makes you be the best that you can possibly be, where you got to devote your life to the process. And if you're not prepared to do that, then it's probably not going to work for you. He goes to Winnipeg and, I don't know, could have just took a sigh of relief. Not everybody can be that and still be effective in the NHL. You don't have to give up your whole life for a certain amount of time or whatever to be an NHL, you know, where it's the center of your life and everything else is on the back burner. But I wonder with Dubois if he just got to the point where he's like, I want to just kind of be a guy in the room you know, put up my 40 points and kind of that type of thing. I don't know. I, I got a bit of question of his heart. I'll say it. We'll see. We'll see. He could prove it wrong. Could prove me wrong. That's our full 42 right there. Oh, Schmidt. No, we got to do Schmidt. And Nate Schmidt, two bad years in a row. Uh, I think it really hit him hard when he got traded out of uh, Vegas. I think it hit him pretty hard. And he went to Vancouver, and I don't know. 
I, you don't see it too often where a player just flat out says, this, I'm not working in Vancouver, and they were like, you're right, it ain't working. So I don't know what's not working. Because he's kind of the type of guy that it should probably work. But Salton did not work in Vancouver at all. That was decent in Vegas. I mean, he was never a great defenseman, but he was okay. So is he going to bounce back to his normal 40-point self? I think it's very possible because Paul Maurice, when you think about it, got guys like Pionk who come in and he... Everybody thought Pionk was going to be very good. I don't think there are too many people that thought he was going to be that good. Forbert bounces around the league. L.A. brought him up pretty well. Uh, goes to Calgary. Eh, didn't look great. Goes to Winnipeg. Looks like a top four defenseman. Paul Maurice seems to do well with defensemen, especially defensemen from other organizations. So I'm going to say he does have a bit of a bounce back here. Okay. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give today. Little Perlo dance for you. Hit the subscribe button. I'll send you a Pearls of Wisdom necklace. Perlo coptered right to your door by Melissa Hernandez. Sub up. Hit the like button. We're going to get ourselves a Jet O Frolic. And I'm going to come to everywhere in the land. We are going to go to games together. We're going to bring sacks of bacon and more sacks of bacon and chocolate, chocolate, like fountains of chocolate in the Jetto Frolic. Because it's like fountains everywhere. You can just turn around and go like this and go, ah, chocolate. I love me some chocolate. Hope you do too, because there'll be tons of it. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.